Hi, this is Julian for Pro Tools Expert. Here's five ways that FabFilter Pro C2 can help you learn compression. Whether you're a novice or whether you're experienced, we're always all learning about compression. And there's a few things in Pro C2 that can really, really help. Here's five. First one is the gain reduction history. This red line at the top shows you not just the instantaneous gain reduction, like that uh, fluctuating red meter over on the top right, but also what's happened in the past. So if you hear something and you think, wow, what was that? Was that a compressor grabbing? Well, you can check it out by following that red line. Something else that's really useful is it shows you the ballistics in a really, really visual way. So for example, if I change the, uh, if, well, if I change the release here, let's say, you can probably hear that that kind of between the hit stuff is behaving differently. Comparing to that, it's kind of jumping straight back up again. But you can also see it in this interaction between the visual and what you're listening for work really well. Also, it really helps you figure out what the difference is between these different modes. For example, let's jump in here and go to mastering. Straight away, we can see massive difference in the length of the release. Let's jump to punch. Well, that looks the same as clean, but if we listen carefully, compared to clean, they're ever so slightly different, but the difference isn't just the timing. Okay, next thing. If you want to really kind of make sure that you're compressing, the interesting stuff happens between the uh, attack and release. So if you want to make sure that you're grabbing exactly the bit you intend to, this audition button here that will just play the bit that's being affected by the compression and you can really dial in what you want. So let's say here, there's the whole transient being grabbed because of very fast attack. Pull down the threshold a bit, grab a little more, grab a bit more deeply. Let's say I want to let some of that stuff through uncompressed. Well, if I lengthen up this attack, now things are getting a little bit more wah, wah, letting through some of that transient and because of that we're not hearing it here so we've come back in here what we're hearing is we're hearing a little bit more transient coming through uncompressed it's making it a little bit more prominent really nice way to audition that stuff Great. In a similar way, when you're trying to figure out what difference am I actually making to the sound? Well, here's my uncompressed drums. And you can definitely hear when I pop it back in, making it kind of more attacky, more punchy. People use the word punch too much, but listen to the difference. Here it is without the compression. There's definitely a hard edge on that kick drum, especially. Have a listen. That is possible because of this auto gain setting here. Because what we're doing is we're changing the level of stuff. Well, this tries its best, and it works really well, to even out those differences. So when you're a being, comparing with to without, the level doesn't change too much. If I turn it off, mm, a little bit louder. If I go in harder, more compression. That difference gets bigger. But if I pop this auto gain in, it does its very best to make the difference as small as possible. So you can compare and learn. Okay, so next up, what happens with these meters. These are still important. We spend a lot of time looking on here. Should be listening as well, but down here, this looks like a moderate amount of compression. However, if I change the scaling to 9 dB, suddenly it looks like I've got a ton going on. This is a really interesting way to make sure that the visual doesn't influence what you're hearing too much. All I've done is I've just changed the meter scale so it's only showing the top 9 dB. Suddenly it looks like a lot of compression. Actually, it is quite a lot of compression. 
but don't be too influenced by that. So if you're trying to make sure that you're not over compressing, make sure that you're not, for example, viewing these meters because it affects everything over here. Say at 90 dB because it looks like I'm barely tickling the top when I'm not actually, I'm actually compressing pretty hard. So take care when you choose that meter scaling. Lastly, considering all this fantastic wealth of feedback that we get, how about making sure that you don't let the visual dominate too much? Click the display button. And then we can go with, well, let's call it ears only mode. We're listening and paying attention to what we're hearing. A little bit of visual feedback, but back to kind of conventional compression uh, metering options. And because of that, it's forcing us to listen to what we're getting rather than relying too much on things like that oh so useful gain reduction history trace. And uh, yeah, basically, I suppose what I'm saying is that use it to learn to help hear the sound of compression. And once you've got it, maybe think about switching it off and just going with your ears again, because that's what's really important. Anyway, that's some stuff that you can do to really help out get your head around compression using FabFilter Pro C2.